These are ordinary houses in an ordinary street, and they could be anywhere in the country. But the house I'm in is stuffed with fake goods, and your home could be too. Welcome to a world where everything is not quite as it seems. Welcome to fake Britain. In this series, I'm going to be investigating the world of fakes, frauds and forgeries and showing you how not to get conned. And today, I'm delving into the deadly world of fake medicines. Coming up, we're on the trail of the fake and illegal medicines smuggled into this country. It could kill you just as easily as heroin. The mum who unwittingly put her diabetic daughter at risk when she was given fake needles on prescription from the NHS. It never even crossed my mind that somebody would counterfeit needles. And I'll discover how easy it is to buy prescription-only medicines online without a prescription. The results are shocking. Taking this medicine could result, obviously, in death. Everything here is fake. The hair straighteners, the toothpaste, the shavers, perfume, shampoos, even condoms. But crooks aren't just targeting everyday products like this. They're also after the contents of your medicine cabinet. All these drugs are fake and they are flooding Britain. It is big business and it's attracting some very serious criminals. But the enforcement agencies are hot on their heels. These officers are from the largest enforcement and intelligence team in Europe, tackling fake drugs. They work for the MHRA, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. We can't show their faces as they all work undercover. They're planning a raid on a suspect they believe to be supplying illegal medicines. The following morning, they join police officers and make their way to an address a few miles away. While police officers carry out interviews with a suspect inside the house, MHRA officers decide to search two cars parked in the driveway. Bingo. Inside one of the car boots, officers find what they're looking for. Tatty cardboard boxes and plastic bags filled to the brim with copies of branded medicines. Eight, uh, 10, 20, 3 times 40, 800, 4,000 to a box. We've got Camagra, Camagra oral jelly, Camagra tablets. This is again oral jelly. Up colours, 20 milligram. All of it is unlicensed. All fake and unlicensed drugs seized by the MHRA teams end up here at one of the evidence stores. It's an Aladdin's cave of fake pharmaceuticals. There are millions of pounds worth of medicines here at this store. Some are counterfeit, some are unlicensed, some are being illegally supplied. The number of seizures are for medicines that would be classified as um, life-saving medicines. So you see a range of some cancer medicines, some heart medicines, medicines where you're trying to trick, deceive, convince a healthcare professional or a patient they're actually the real thing. Back at the raid and the suspect is led away by police. He's been arrested for possession with intent to supply unlicensed medicine. If he's found guilty, he could be looking at a two-year prison sentence. It's been a successful operation. The medicines that were seized in this operation were unlicensed generic medicines. They're not authorised or licensed for sale here in the UK. This is medicine being supplied by people with absolutely no qualifications at all. All the medicines seized on the raid are taken back to the evidence store to be used for the prosecution. Well, there you see four diamond-shaped medicines. This is a um, clear copy of Viagra. 
But here it's being supplied in just a blister. So there's no patient information leaflet, there's no advice to the patient, there's no packaging. Here we've got um, a copy of um, another medicine, a medicine called Levitra, to deal with erectile dysfunction. And this is a copy as well. You see old cardboard boxes, dirty packaging, wrapped up in newspaper. You know, these are not the conditions in which you should be supplying medicines. Let me introduce you to a man who campaigns for safer medicines for all of us in the UK. Jim Thompson. Good to see you, Jim. Nice to meet you, Dom. How big a problem is fake medicines in the UK? Dom, it's a massive problem in both the illegitimate supply chain and the legitimate supply chain. We'll never really know exactly how many fake drugs are out there because the counterfeit is not going to tell us. You know, this is a crime and it's a covert crime. How many of these drugs are actually being purchased online? You can buy any drug you like, prescription drug, controlled substance online, put your order in, your credit card will be charged and the, the drugs will be delivered to your front door. I can sort of understand why somebody might want to buy a fake handbag or a watch or something to, you know, to keep up with fashion trends they couldn't afford to. I cannot understand why anybody would possibly want to buy medicines. What is the reason? Well, you know, it's really interesting. The average buyer of medicines online is, is you or I, actually. It's, it's a man, 45 to 55, professional, who doesn't have time to go to the community pharmacy. And we buy everything else online. The websites look great, we assume it's safe, and so we start to buy our medicines online. Now, there are other groups of people who I've got, I have to say, a, a certain amount of sympathy for. If you think you have depression, for example, you probably don't want that on your medical record. And so people get all their patient information via the internet, and they self-medicate. And generally speaking here, people are buying these fake medicines. They could just be mortgaging a huge problem later on in life, couldn't they? Absolutely. Later? We meet the mum who found herself using fake needles to inject her diabetic daughter with insulin. Somebody's done something and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And that's an awful place to be. And experts tell us exactly what's in some of the medicines you can buy online. You could be doing yourself an enormous amount of harm. You could technically be swallowing a poison. With around one in seven of us admitting to buying medicines online without a prescription, agencies have launched a hard-hitting campaign to raise awareness about fake medicine. Today, the Get Real, Get a Prescription Roadshow is at London's Liverpool Street Station. This is a construction site unlike any you've ever seen. Right then, all these boxes are packed, ready to go. They've mocked up the sort of conditions that have been found in fake pharmaceutical workshops around the world. Well, we've taken this roadshow out to six cities across the UK and we've seen about 14,000 people had really positive responses. We realise that a lot of people just don't realise the dangers of buying prescription medicines without a prescription online. They may be putting their health at risk. Were you surprised that these medicines may be fake and potentially include harmful ingredients such as rat poison? Oh God, no. We understand that people are buying online from unregulated sites because of reasons of cost, speed and convenience. Where's all this lot off to then? You can buy so much over the internet nowadays. If you can get fake clothes and stuff, it doesn't surprise me if you can get fake medicine. People are desperate and um, think that they might get something cheaper and get away with buying something that they don't have to spend so much money on. Uh, I don't think they'd order their medicine on the internet if they knew what was in it. Hey, I'm running out of rat poison here. What else can they use? It's just filler. Somebody I knew actually um, bought some medicine online and had a very bad experience with them. They bought some medicine which was supposed to help them sleep and they ended up getting very, very depressed and having panic attacks. With so many of us tempted to play at being doctor, we decided to do our own research. With Jim Thompson's help, we went online to see what medicines we could buy without a prescription. Today we're going to be looking at online pharmacy, or as, as I like to call it, online drug selling actually, because not very many of the websites we're going to be looking at are actually pharmacies. These websites look incredibly legitimate. All this adds a veneer to the business. OK, so... Plavix is, is a medicine for people who have had heart attacks or heart transplants. It's a life-saving drug, it's not a lifestyle drug. 
One of the neat side effects of buying Plavix online is that it's likely to arrive with a couple of free generic Viagra tablets, sellotape to it, and I would humbly suggest those are not drugs that you want to be taking in combination. Medical questionary, optional. So I don't even have to fill that in, that's, that's going to come anyway. Lipitor is the best-selling drug in the world. It's for high cholesterol. It's just under patent, so you shouldn't be able to buy generic Lipitor, certainly not in the United Kingdom. It's in stock. All I have to do here, I press Add to Cart. We have a patient responsibility statement. I'll just agree with that. <laughs> you play the game, it's going to arrive. So our virtual trolley's full. But what have we bought? Some heart medicine, which very surprisingly comes with two free Viagra tablets, a potent fertility drug, another heart medicine to reduce cholesterol, Tamiflu for swine flu, weight loss pills, and a hair loss drug, which we arranged to be sent to a woman as a test because it's dangerous to be handled by women, and some extra Viagra. Now remember, all of these medicines should only be available on prescription, yet we've managed to buy them with just a couple of clicks of the mouse. Later, we'll see exactly what we got back in the post. Any drug you could possibly want is available on the internet, but you have no idea what's in it. It could be fake, it could be dangerous, you just don't know what you're getting. Hairdresser Gary bought an injectable tanning drug online. Hearing about injecting yourself and just building up a tan without having to do anything, it sounds good, doesn't it? I saw it, you know, heart started beating, thinking, yes, I'm going to be brown, it's great. And, um, yeah, and just bought it straight away. Otherwise known as Jabatan, Melanotan is an unlicensed tanning drug which is illegal to sell in the UK. The drug has to be injected, and side effects include nausea and hot flushes. Doctors have reported that users of Melanotan have seen moles on their skin change colour and size. These symptoms may be associated with skin cancer, but Gary says he wasn't aware of any of the risks. Desperate for his instant tan, Gary, who owns this salon in Essex, bought a year's supply in just a couple of clicks from an American website. There was nothing confusing about the website, I've got to say, it was really straightforward, but looking back now, it was too straightforward. Nothing about age or heart disease, there was nothing on there at all. Three days later, Gary's Melanotan arrived, but something didn't seem quite right. I wanted to take it straight away and when I opened it up it came in a case um, and it just had this in it. There was injections, you got the antiseptic wipes, the vials, but that was it. There was no, there was no instructions. There was an invoice, but there was no instructions. I, di I didn't know what to do. But when you go on the website there's no contact number for them. So I emailed them. Um, within about half an hour I got an email back and they said, um, yeah, you take 0.1 milligrams, but on the actual syringe, um, it goes up in tens. Gary was confused about what dosage to take, and by the measurements on the syringe, he had no idea whether to fill it completely or not. If I had taken all of that, I wouldn't have survived it. Thankfully, he only took a small amount. Injected it, everything fine, not a problem. A um, little bit cold going in, it was a little bit sore, um, but I didn't think anything of it. And then it all happened. Find out what happened to Gary later in the programme. Dr Steve Field. Steve, thanks for coming along. Pleasure. What advice would you have for anybody either doing it or considering buying drugs online? Well, if they are going online, I'd be very, very careful. The Royal Pharmaceutical Society does have a regulation system, and what I would advise is look for their logo and cross-check by going onto the Royal Pharmaceutical Society website to make sure that it's real. But really, regulation, um, it's very loose because, you know, it's an international trade. How concerned are GPs about people buying medicines online? 
Well, we're very worried about people getting things over the internet, particularly when they're looking for drugs which we only give a few out on the NHS. Uh, you could be getting drugs which are the right drug but in the wrong dro dose, very high, therefore more chance of getting side effects. Or it can be a completely different drug. I would avoid the internet completely if I were you. Coming up, the shocking results of the tests on our internet drug orders. So counterfeit medicines can be murder. And fake medicine in the NHS? The fact that they've been developed to such a standard that they could convince a healthcare professional represent a very real risk. One of the main reasons for the increase in fake drugs is the incredible amount of money to be made by criminals. Amazingly, it's far more profitable to deal in prescription drugs than in heroin or cocaine. The profit margin for $1,000 invested in ingredients to produce heroin is $3,000. That's a 200% profit margin. The profit margin for $1,000 invested in producing a widely counterfeited drug is around $30,000, so that's a 2,000% profit margin. This is organised crime on a global scale and, and money laundering on a global scale. Um, it's an income generation tool for, for serious international criminals and it, it is incredibly profitable. It's far more profitable than narcotics and it's far less risky than narcotics. With the availability of counterfeit drugs on the increase in the UK, experts are worried. Fake medicines have proved lethal in other countries. Recently, 84 children in Nigeria died after taking a teething medicine that was found to contain a toxic chemical usually found in antifreeze. And more than 100 people died in Panama after swallowing a fake syrup for colds which contained a dangerous glycerin. 81 people died in the United States after taking heparin, a blood thinner used by dialysis patients. It turned out to be fake, made in China. What you're seeing here is police footage of raids on fake pharmaceutical workshops in South America. The criminals here are producing fake copies of an anti-inflammatory medicine which could have reached patients in the UK. Fake medicines made in workshops like these can turn up anywhere in the world. Grotty plastic bottles and tubes are used to pour the mixed ingredients into the containers. These men then cut and stamp the tablets, showing just how quick and easy it is to produce fake drugs. And if you think these budding scientists have any interest in your health, take a look at this. Boric acid, a toxic powder sometimes used as an insecticide and one of the dangerous ingredients they were putting in these fake tablets. Once the tablets have been cut, they're dried under heat lamps. The final part of this unhygienic process is to seal the drugs with the foil packaging, complete with forged logos. While it's very rare for fake drugs to be produced in the UK, Mick Dietz and the MHRA team have some horror stories about the counterfeit medicine business here. People involved in these operations may have absolutely no medical qualifications whatsoever. As far as the conditions are concerned, I can give you some examples this year of centres that were storing the medicines prior to sending them out on the internet. And of course this website will have um, a very clinical appearance, a doctor with a stethoscope, a nurse, um, a very crisp and clean appearance on your screen at home. But when you get behind the scenes, that's really the case. This year we've been to a location, they were kept in um, a storeroom where some dogs were also kept. The dogs had chewed the corners of the boxes, um, the packing cases with the medicine that they'd been smuggled into the UK. Uh, there was dog urine and feces in, in the room with this. It was in a shocking um, condition. The heat in the room was obviously too hot to store the medicines anyway, but the filthy conditions were just um, probably the worst that we'd ever seen. We've had cases where um, car mechanics have been selling medicines with sort of greasy oil on the invoices. We've also seen dirty uh, cardboard boxes covered in dust um, and dead insects. If consumers and patients and the, and the public saw the back rooms, it's unlikely they'd visit the front room. Later, what happened when the Essex hairdresser injected himself with a tanning drug? 
It took me about a good, a good three weeks to get over 0.1 milligrams of this stupid drug. And how some of this fake heart medicine got through to patients on the NHS. We are an attractive market to counterfeiters. This is profit motivated. But first, how are the criminals getting these fake drugs into the UK? Here you've got some good examples of how medicines are smuggled into the UK. The smugglers will tend to send the capsules in this case and the patient information leaflets and the packages separately. So if customs intercept uh, one particular consignment, they haven't got all of the components of, of the final product. We have an example here of a tub of um, what looks like mineral supplements for dogs. But when you look inside, that's um, full up with counterfeit Viagra. At Heathrow Airport, the UK Border Agency detection team are on the front line of counterfeit drug smuggling. They deal with the millions of tonnes of goods which arrive on aircraft at Heathrow Airport. They come in in sacks like this. Um, we have manifests that we look at, but also we can tell from some of the sacks the packaging that it comes in, what it looks like. We also x-ray some of the bags to see what they look like. And, um, and my staff are just very good at finding things like that. It's amazing because you, can, you get to know the textures of the boxes. Fake medicine is a constant problem, and Peter's team have just made a huge seizure. Viagra is probably the most counterfeited drug in the world. Taken without medical supervision, it can be highly dangerous, even life-threatening. Viagra shouldn't be taken if suffering from heart disease or high blood pressure. Thousands of men are putting their lives at risk every day because they're too embarrassed to go to their GP. We found 66,000 packs of Viagra. Um, they're all addressed to different people. There's five different boxes, so it was five different people. Um, we send samples off to uh, the right holder for these goods, and uh, they've come back and confirmed that these are in fact counterfeit. So. Uh, that's about £390,000 worth of Viagra that's been uh, taken off the market. And we don't know what the, uh, what the content of them likes, what the active ingredients like. We don't know whether these are dangerous or not. Um, some of them are likely to be. And the fakes just keep coming. The team have made another discovery. This time, there are four boxes stuffed with more fake Viagra. There are 38,000 tablets here with a value of about £80,000. The right holder now has to take court action within 10 days against the importer. And if he does, we will seize these and they will be destroyed. Otherwise, we will take revenue action against the importers because these are not declared as Viagra or Camagra or pharmaceuticals of any kind. They'll be described as gifts or goods for personal use or samples or clothing or anything but what they are. And sometimes there's no attempt to hide the goods. The owner of this suitcase thought they would try their luck. Last Sunday this came in um, as part of a courier consignment and one of my officers um, examined it thinking there might be cigarettes inside. But uh, to her complete amazement, it was full of 20,000 more Camagra pills um, worth a lot more than cigarettes, as it happens. These would be worth probably £100,000. Camagra is an Indian version of Viagra and illegal to sell in this country. It's probably going to a private address again, um, possibly somebody who's running an internet business without telling the tax authorities or us. But I think of them the same way as I would uh, class drug dealers because the, the fact is that they are selling them to people who are buying them in innocence. You know, they're not buying heroin, they don't know the dangers um, necessarily, but it could kill you just as easily as heroin could kill you. Now, you're probably thinking, this won't happen to me. I don't buy any medicines online. But think again, because some fake products are finding their way into the NHS. Now, I am a diabetic and I rely on NHS prescriptions, so this next story really strikes home. Angela Allison and her husband Donald from Preston certainly have their work cut out for them. 
With five daughters under the age of 10, mealtimes are a constant juggling act. On top of that, one of their daughters, Claudia, has type 1 diabetes. She has to be injected four times a day with insulin, using needles prescribed on the NHS. But a few months ago, Angela noticed that something wasn't quite right. What we had noticed was she'd been bruising a lot more. I injected her and she said, oh, mummy, I'm a bit sore. And I thought she meant she was sore where I'd injected her, because sometimes they do sting and they are uncomfortable. I said, well, where are you sore? And she said, I'm sore all over. And at the time, I thought, oh, that's not quite right. The needles she had been given on prescription from the NHS were fake, but it was two weeks before Angela found out, alerted by an email from the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Basically, I realised we definitely had them, and I just felt sick, and I thought, she can't have another injection with these needles. But it was a Sunday evening, no pharmacies. What do you do? So I had to wait till the morning and go and see the pharmacy. And I felt helpless. And I, you know what's going through your mind? Where'd they come from? Why'd they counterfeited them? Were they sterile? Which is a big thing to me. And why? Why would somebody want to do that? You know, what are they going to gain or achieve from it? You feel trapped that somebody's done something and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And that's an awful place to be, especially when you're talking about a child. It hurt when they use the ones that weren't very nice, but it doesn't hurt as much now when I'm using the real ones. Angela immediately counted all the needles in their sharps box to find out how many they'd already used. There were around 60, about two weeks worth. If you blame yourself for why didn't I notice? No, why didn't I realise? And then when you actually see a counterfeit needle next to the genuine product, it's very difficult to tell and it would never cross your mind. The email showed her how to detect the fake. Firstly, there was a line that was missing on the outside of the needle box and there were very subtle differences in the markings on the actual needles. If you're just looking at these now, I think you'd find it very difficult, really to see any difference, but we do know that this is the counterfeit needle. <coughs> the date and the, the code number is a lot darker. We discovered ourselves that if you feel over the top, that the counterfeit one, I'm having to look at these still, is a little bit sharper. It never even crossed my mind that somebody would counterfeit needles. Didn't even cross my mind. I think that was one of the biggest shocks. Well. Why? Understandably, Angela wants answers. I would like to meet the person or the people involved in this counterfeit and sit them down and say, please explain to my beautiful eight-year-old daughter why you are doing this, why you would endanger her life or the people's lives. Don't you think that her life is challenging enough with a you know, long-term condition she has to inject four times a day? and you are there purely for money reasons, endangering her life, why? Explain it to her. Novo Nordisk and the MHRA are still investigating how the needles managed to get into the NHS, but it's believed they may have been manufactured in Iran. Novo Nordisk, the manufacturer of the genuine needles, gave us the following statement. Patient safety is paramount to Novo Nordisk. We are committed to ensuring high quality standards of product and safety are upheld. Counterfeiting of Novo Nordic's products have been extremely rare. Angela now writes down the batch number of every pack of needles she receives, but is angry that it took her so long to find out. There was nothing in the papers that I was aware of. So if you didn't have internet access, how would we have ever known? But the question remains, how does fake medicine get into the NHS? The NHS supply chain is actually quite complicated, so this makes it slightly easier for counterfeiters to infiltrate the medicine supply chain. In the UK, both pharmacists and wholesalers are trying to get the best price when they buy their medicines. That means they look anywhere in Europe for the best deal. It's perfectly legal for a wholesaler to buy medicine from another European country, so long as it's repackaged to include the patient information in English. 
But this means that packs of drugs can change hands numerous times in numerous countries. Hands that you might not want on your medicines. So one of the other problems with the supply chain is that there's no definitive audit trail. In some European countries, the wholesalers will record the batch number of medicines coming in and out of their premises, and this doesn't happen in the UK. So when there's a recall on a medicine, it's difficult to know who you've supplied that medicine to. Ironically, in the UK, for veterinary medicines, the wholesalers do have to record the batch numbers of medicines going in and out of their premises, but it's not the same for human medicines. Getting into the NHS is the holy grail for our drug scammers. Although this pharmacist hasn't reported any counterfeit drugs turning up here, he's very worried about the scale of the problem. I would like to see an international clampdown. These medicines can kill. They can really kill people or damage health seriously. So. I personally think that's a very, you know, it's a criminal act. We are an attractive market to counterfeiters. This is profit motivated. So if they're getting a high return and they perceive a low risk, um, then they're going to concentrate on it. Since 2004, there have been 10 serious recalls of counterfeit medicines which have got into the NHS. The fact that they've been developed to such a standard that they could convince a healthcare professional represent a very real risk. During June 2007, the MHRA issued three of these emergency recalls in a matter of days. They were for life-saving medicines. Zyprexa, which controls the symptoms of schizophrenia, Casadex for prostate cancer, and Plavix, used for strokes and heart conditions. This is the entire seizure of the counterfeit Plavix, which is now in the hands of the manufacturer of the genuine medicine, Sanofi Aventis. What we have here are two batches of counterfeit Plavix, approximately 20,000 packs of this particular box and 2,000 of the other, which were detected in the UK wholesaler supply chain. The packaging of this heart medicine was made to such a high standard that it even managed to deceive health professionals. And the man responsible for getting it into the UK? Kevin Xu a Chinese businessman from Beijing who was caught doing the same thing in America and sentenced to six and a half years in prison there for selling fake medicine. It's believed that Xu and his gang exported the fake packs of medicine from China to Singapore and then onto Europe, smuggled in drums of chemicals. But what was in the fake heart medicine? In the case of these particular batches, they both contain approximately 80% of the actual active ingredient that should be present. This means that anyone taking it isn't getting the full benefit of the medicine, which could be, in many instances, quite critical. Although the MHRA managed to seize 40,000 packs of all three fake drugs, there are still an estimated 30,000 unaccounted for. These could have been dispensed to hospitals and patients. There are some packs here which um, we had to put out a recall for, and indeed some of those packs came back from pharmacies, and we do suspect that perhaps some of those packs were prescribed to patients who would have taken them. Coming up, we see the results of those tests on the medicines we ordered online. Good counterfeits there, they'll get past pharmacists. Remember Gary Bailey? He heard about an injectable tanning drug called Melanotan. Finding it easily available online, he bought some, completely unaware of the potential side effects and the dangers involved. Injected it, everything fine, not a problem. A um, little bit cold going in, it was a little bit sore, um, but I didn't think anything of it. And then it all happened, really. Gary was violently sick and started to feel dizzy. To be quite honest, it's like having the flu. You just want to be, you just want to be left alone. You can't move. Within a few hours, he was rushed to A and E. I was in A and E for probably about three to four hours. It took me about a good, a good three weeks to get over 0.1 milligrams of this stupid drug. Gary had suffered an allergic reaction to the melanotan, but because it was never tested, nobody knows whether the drug he took was real or fake. What we do know is that he was sold an illegal and unlicensed drug and he was completely unaware of the consequences. On top of that, Gary has something else on his mind. 
My biggest concern about this, and it, again, it, I didn't even think of it at the time because I was so ill, was that the, the, the needles weren't, um, they weren't sealed. And that is my biggest concern about everything. Melanotan is extremely worrying to us uh, when it's misused as it has been and it has caused harm to people and adverse reactions. Uh, firstly, it's an unlicensed product, which means there's no clinical data to show that it's effective for use and it's safe to use. Secondly, it involves the injecting uh, oneself and of course the, you can imagine the sort of unhygienic conditions that could be involved with people injecting themselves. Gary realises now he had a narrow escape. It wasn't until after I'd taken it that my partner had done all this research and was like, oh, I can't believe you took this and they do this and they do that and but, all right, <laughs> I know that now. Gary paid a high price for his online experience and has some words of advice for anybody out there tempted to buy their tan on the web. For the people that want to try it, don't. Don't go near it at all. There's so many good products out there and there are so many wrong products out there. And Melanotan is a prime example of a wrong product. Earlier, we went online to find out which prescription medicines we could buy without a prescription. We bought everything from heart drugs to fertility pills. After a few weeks, they turned up. I'm joined again by our expert, Jim Thompson. Jim, are you surprised? Not surprised, but I'm disgusted. Your research has shown exactly, exactly what you can find if you buy drugs online, and it's time something happened to stop this trade. This is a patient safety issue. Let's just take a look at some of the stuff you've got here. Here we've got a, a heart medicine here for people recovering from serious coronary issues, and we get free Viagra with it. It's, it's unacceptable. Well, I mean, that's sort of like a bonus. You know, thanks for ordering your drugs with us. Here's our Viagra. Exactly right. We have a hair loss um, product here that's only meant for use by men, which was sent to a woman. That, that would have serious side effects to that woman. What and sort of serious side effects? She wouldn't be having babies anytime soon, in fact, ever. And here's a weight loss drug. What happens if, if an anorexic person orders this medicine online? They could be in, in even more trouble than they're in already. These criminals are getting better and better. The packaging is getting better and better. Even experts can't tell the difference. How on earth is a patient meant to tell the difference? These packets came from all corners of the globe, in particular, India and Hong Kong. Do bear in mind, though, that we purchased these without any prescription. And as you're about to see, the results on the tests that I've had done on these is pretty shocking. We took our drugs to expert analyst Professor Tony Moffat at the London School of Pharmacy. If somebody suspected that uh, they bought a fake medicine, I don't think there's any real way that they could detect that unless they had uh, a product which they had already bought previously of the same kind, and then you could compare the two things together. But even some of the uh, good counterfeits there, they'll get past pharmacists. So the trouble on just looking at the outer wrappings of these things in the carton, very, very difficult to detect their counterfeits. So it's almost impossible to tell which drug is real and which is fake by looking at the packaging. But you can show the difference by chemical analysis. Tony's lab uses this machine which scans the chemicals in a drug to find out whether or not it's fake. First off, our pack of four Viagra tablets. I think you can clearly see the differences between these two spectra here, which will give us a strong indication that the test ones which we have here are in fact counterfeit. Tony then tested the Tamiflu, the weight loss and the hair loss drugs. Shockingly, they turned out to be the real deal, which means we had bought highly potent prescription-only drugs which are potentially dangerous if taken without medical supervision. We also bought three drugs that turned out to be generic copies of branded drugs. Only one of them, Lipitor, could be accurately tested in this country because it is still under patent. We took it to the manufacturer, Pfizer. It proved to be the most dangerous drug we had bought. Lipitor controls high cholesterol levels and is prescribed for patients with heart problems. Pfizer found that the amount of the active ingredient in the drug we bought was far below the genuine product and varied so much from tablet to tablet that it was potentially lethal. To be honest, I was very shocked. If they're not under the doctor's care and, and regularly having their uh, cholesterol levels monitored, then taking this, this, this medicine would, could like, um, result, obviously, in death. We also showed our results to leading cardiologist, Dr Graham Jackson. 
If you've got a, a heart condition, we know that lowering cholesterol prevents you from having further heart attacks or strokes. So if you are taking a fake product, your cholesterol will go up and you will not get that protection anymore. So you could get another heart attack or stroke. Finally, remember the free Viagra we got with Plavix, the other heart medicine we ordered online? If there was any of the active ingredient in the Viagra, it could prove highly dangerous. So again, this is another fake Viagra tablet, but chemically it is very, very similar to authentic Viagra tablets, but it's very clearly not because it doesn't have the right markings on it. So they've gone to extraordinary lengths to get the chemistry of the makeup of this, the constituents right, and have failed completely on the physical characteristics, in other words, the logo. Very strange. So we had bought a killer combination of Viagra and a life-saving heart medicine. Shocking to find that we have a heart medicine and, and you've been sent a free erectile dysfunction tablet along with it, which is, you know, highly surprising and potentially very harmful, one would think. It would almost be funny in a way, um, if, if, even if it wasn't such a, a dangerous thing to do, because you've got a heart medicine here, the person would be taking perhaps a nitrate preparation, now, Viagra and a nitrate are absolutely contraindicated because there could be a catastrophic fall in blood pressure. So these people may well be on these drugs and then they're being given a sort of sweet-looking Viagra pill, which could kill them. It's quite outrageous. And if that's not enough to put you off buying medicines online, Dr Jackson has some shocking first-hand experience. In my own practice, I, I would estimate I've seen over 30, perhaps 40 to 50 men a year who've taken principally Viagra or a rival drug off the internet. I have one patient who took Viagra with a lady he'd met for the first time. He had no checkups, and during sex, he had a heart attack. And it's not just what's inside the tablets that could be dangerous. They use printer ink to colour tablets blue. Considering they use cement mixers to mix them, it is obviously probably cement in tablets as well. Some of the preparations, if you look at the Viagra preparation here, it's got a coating which we know could be road paint, shoe polish, brick dust, talcum powder. We've even found arsenic in some of them. You're swallowing a product with no evidence of safety, no evidence of effectiveness, and, you know, you could be doing yourself an enormous amount of harm. You could technically be swallowing a poison. My view of the people who sell counterfeit medicines is they're criminals just like anybody else, but they're more dangerous than some criminals because they jeopardise people's lives. It's manslaughter, really. Tomorrow, we'll be on the trail of the people who aren't who they say they are. The fake doctor and army officer who even deceived his wife. I said, my name's Georgina Miles. Who are you? Because it seemed quite clear that I knew nothing about this man who just two weeks ago I'd married. And unbelievably, the fake dentist. The list of risks will go on and on and on. And in the worst case scenario, might of course lead to patient death. And that's all from Fake Britain. Goodbye. Tonight, Sharon has a dinner party disaster in EastEnders at 7.30. After that, Waterloo Road is at 8. And it's another revealing insight into the lives of Britain's biggest hoarders at 9. On the way next, Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs>